Welcome back to the small experimenting table and first of all a bit of good news. Now if I bring the camera in you can see the LED is flashing. What's it connected to? Well I'm not touching it and this red wire comes around and goes to that large heatsink there on top of the PC so we're basically collecting energy from the PC but the circuit is running and the LED is flashing. I'll tell you a bit more about this next. So I'll turn the light on so you can see better. At the top here we've got the AMD K6 old processor from the computer which I connected a wire to, I showed that in the last video. Then we've got the circuit here, we've got the scavenging circuit and we've got the now transistor based flasher. That's just a blocking oscillator. And here we've got something, well, it's supposed to be replacing me. So we've got a capacitor on the left, the yellow thing, and the 10k popped. I'll show you the page I got this idea from. And here is that page. Thanks very much to Kang Steery for, well, steering me in the right direction. And I hope I've pronounced your name right. The thing is, it showed on this page that capacitance of about 100 PF, somewhere like that, and resistance somewhere up to 10k does represent the human body and so that's what I've built into a little circuit I've made two of them and neither of which seem to work correctly yet but the point is that's apparently how to remove the self from a circuit if that circuit works better by touching components but the point I'm trying to make is you can see the light slightly go in there if I touch this with my finger the virtual ground well, everything speeds up and it's brighter. So what I want to do is to replicate the me in a little circuit. That's my point. I did try this 0-512 PF variable capacitor and that 10k pot there. Uh, that's no, no measurements at all. I couldn't even get the meter to recognise that there was capacitance across this. It could be broken. So I thought, well, when I was testing myself across the meter probes, um, it was somewhere around 4.7 uh, nanofarads and down to about 470 picofarads. Anyway, I picked the 472, the little yellow capacitor, and the 10k pot because I appear to be around 4k of resistance across the probes. And this still doesn't work. So I have a lot to do with that section. So as I say, that's not really doing much. I've connected one side to the virtual ground and the other side to the ground connection of the circuit. And that should have replaced me. But luckily, when I found the big heat sink, I'll bring it around, that seemed to do the job of me. Though it's not much smaller than me, is it? So, what I'm hoping to do is to make this circuit better, more efficient, and get something um, a lot smaller that does the same thing. That's the aim to make things smaller, more compact. Now, here's something very interesting about this setup. As we can see, We've got, there we are, the LED is flashing. And what do you think might happen if I turn the computer off? You'd think, well, surely there's nothing then to, there we are, shut down, nothing then to harvest. There we are, screen's gone off, computer's gone off, speakers have gone off. It's still just sat there on the top, comes around, and it's still going. It's still flashing away. Now I know there's things like we've got that um, transformer there and inside the computer I mean there'll be something you know there'll be its usual circuits running but not with that same output that I thought that thing was collecting sitting on the top there. So that really does intrigue me that it is still going. Now quickly here are the circuit diagrams in case you've not seen my previous videos. This is the harvesting circuit quite a popular thing very easy to make. And here is the LED flashing circuit, which itself is just a basic blocking oscillator, with perhaps the exception of the 5.6 megaohm resistor, which is quite large. Also, I've tried 250 plus 250 turns instead of the 150. Um, I don't know if it does anything differently, but I thought I'd try it. So, what we do have is a system that runs even when everything's switched off. You can see it running still. It runs 24-7. <laughs> which is great, I don't need to touch the circuit 
to get it to run so that's been great but that part doesn't work I mean in a way does it need to considering what's going on here but I, honestly I would like to really improve this a heck of a lot make everything smaller to remove that thing and uh, you know generally improve everything that's going on but I hope that was of interest and I will be carrying on with this project I just would like folks to keep chipping in with comments if you would be so kind for the direction and how to improve this further.